Have you ever felt like something was just a little bit off, like reality itself had a glitch? The simulation hypothesis suggests our reality could be a sophisticated computer simulation, a sort of a code. Our lives and experiences nothing more than a computation. The implications are staggering, questioning everything we know about the universe and existence. But how do we explore such a concept? Is there any way to prove or disprove it? Let's look into the heart of the simulation hypothesis, exploring the arguments, the evidence, and the important philosophical questions it raises. The idea of simulated worlds is far from new. From Plato's allegory of the cave to Descartes' evil demon, philosophers have long grappled with the idea that our senses might be deceiving us. In 2003, philosopher Nick Bostrom's paper gave the simulation hypothesis significant traction. Bostrom posits that advanced civilizations could create simulations indistinguishable from reality, with simulated beings unaware of their true nature. If such simulations are possible, it's statistically improbable that we are living in the original base reality. What are the key concepts? What is the potential evidence? What are the challenges of proving or disproving the simulation hypothesis? Imagine our universe is a simulation, a vast computation. Wouldn't we expect to find glitches? Just like software can have bugs, our simulated reality might show hints of its artificial nature. This idea drives the search for anomalies in physical constants and laws. The fundamental constants of nature, like the speed of light and the gravitational constant, underpin reality. But what if these constants weren't so constant? Tiny variations could suggest the universe is built on adjustable parameters, like lines of code. Detecting such anomalies would be incredibly difficult, requiring advanced scientific instruments and techniques. It would mean probing the universe at its most extreme and fundamental levels. The speed of light, approximately 299,792,458 meters per second, is considered an absolute limit in the cosmos. According to Einstein's theory of special relativity, nothing can travel faster than light. But what if, in a simulated universe, the speed of light was a computational limit? Perhaps the simulators imposed a speed limit to conserve processing power. If this were the case, we might find subtle variations in the speed of light under extreme conditions. Detecting such variations would be challenging, but could provide evidence of a simulated reality. The quantum world, the realm of atoms and subatomic particles, is notoriously strange and counterintuitive. It's a place where particles can be in multiple states at once and where observation can influence outcomes. Some physicists speculate that the strangeness of quantum mechanics might hold clues to the true nature of reality. Could the Heisenberg uncertainty principle be a consequence of the finite resolution of the simulation? Similarly, quantum entanglement where particles influence each other instantaneously, might be signs of shortcuts within the simulation's code. While speculative, the bizarre nature of the quantum world fuels speculation about a simulated reality. If our reality is a simulation, it would still be bound by the limits of computation. Could we devise experiments that push the boundaries of these computational resources, revealing hints of the simulation's limitations? One idea explores whether there are fundamental limits to the accuracy of physical laws and constants within the simulation. Perhaps the simulators implemented shortcuts that manifest as tiny variations under extreme conditions. Furthermore, the simulation might employ tricks to optimize performance like rendering regions in lower detail when not observed. Could we test for such selective rendering, revealing the simulation's resource-saving mechanisms? What if our universe operated on a principle similar to digital images, composed of tiny, discrete pixels? The concept of a pixelated universe proposes that space-time is quantized, composed of indivisible units. These fundamental units, often referred to as Planck lengths, would be incredibly tiny. Physicists theorize that quantum mechanics might impose a fundamental limit on the smoothness of space-time. If our universe were pixelated, 
we could detect subtle signatures of this granularity through experiments in quantum gravity or high-energy particle physics. The discrete nature of space-time might manifest as tiny deviations from expected behavior in particle interactions. If our reality were a simulation, there would be a limit to the resolution of this cosmic simulation. This cosmic resolution would dictate the smallest possible size of objects and events and the shortest possible duration of time. How could we detect this cosmic resolution? One avenue is cosmology, the study of the universe's origin and structure. The cosmic microwave background radiation provides a snapshot of the early universe. If our universe were a simulation, the finite resolution might manifest as subtle imperfections in the CMB. Detecting such signatures would require incredibly precise measurements, pushing the limits of our observational capabilities. What if we could send a message to the architects of our simulated reality? The notion seems absurd, yet it's a tantalizing prospect. Imagine proving that our reality is not what it seems, and establishing contact with the beings that crafted it. But how could we attempt such a feat? We would need to send a signal that could traverse the digital divide. This would require understanding the underlying architecture of the simulation. We would need to uncover the rules and protocols that govern the flow of information between our world and the simulator's realm. The challenges are immense, but the pursuit is a test to human curiosity and ingenuity. If our universe is a simulation, it must have code dictating the behavior of every particle and force. Could we manipulate this code to send a message by altering the fabric of our reality? Imagine developing the ability to manipulate matter and energy at the most fundamental level. Could such feats create ripples in the simulation, anomalies that the simulators would detect as signals? Another avenue is quantum mechanics, where entangled particles influence each other instantaneously. Could we exploit these quantum connections to send messages outside the simulation? If we could send a message beyond our simulated reality, what language would the simulators understand? Mathematics, the language of physics, might be the key, as our universe is likely based on mathematical principles. However, the simulators might have developed new forms of mathematics beyond our comprehension. Perhaps the key lies in universal patterns, fundamental truths that transcend any particular language. Could we encode a message in the fabric of space-time or the distribution of galaxies? The search for a cosmic protocol is a test to human curiosity and ingenuity. More on Bostrom's trilemma, are we simulated beings? Nick Bostrom's simulation argument, published in 2003, presents a compelling probabilistic framework. At its core is a trilemma with three possibilities, each with profound implications for our understanding of reality. The first posits that civilizations like ours go extinct before reaching a post-human stage. The second suggests post-human civilizations might have no interest in running ancestor simulations. The third one looks into statistics of living in the ocean of simulations if the Ferts too do not materialize. The post-human potential, a universe of simulated realities. Now, let's venture into the most mind-boggling possibility of Bostrom's trilemma, the notion that we are almost certainly living in a simulation. This proposition hinges on the assumption that if post-human civilizations possess the capability and the inclination to create ancestor or any other simulations, they could generate countless such simulations. Imagine a civilization with computing power beyond our wildest dreams, capable of conjuring entire universes with a flick of a switch, each populated by billions of simulated and conscious beings, each believing their world to be real. The sheer number of simulated realities would dwarf the single instance of base reality, making it statistically improbable that we occupy this original, unsimulated existence. Think of it like this. If a technologically advanced civilization could create a million simulated universes with a billion simulated beings each, that's a trillion simulated consciousnesses compared to the relatively small number of beings in the base reality. The odds of being one of the original unsimulated beings would be astronomically small. 
This leads to the unsettling possibility that our experiences, our memories, our sense of self could all be part of a grand, intricate simulation, a cosmic video game run by beings whose motives and methods remain shrouded in mystery. What does it mean to live in a digital world? If our reality is just a computation, the foundations of our understanding come into question. Are our choices predetermined or does free will exist? Could our choices be influenced by external actors? Do we cease to exist when we die or is there a digital afterlife? Are the best of the evolved souls saved for further iterations? Are the simulators benevolent, indifferent or beyond comprehension? These questions cut to the core of what it means to be human. The simulation hypothesis runs headlong into a fundamental challenge, the problem of unfalsifiability. A hypothesis is falsifiable if an observation or experiment could disprove it. The simulation hypothesis suffers from this problem. Any anomaly could be explained as a feature of the simulation. A glitch in space-time might seem like evidence, but it could be a limitation of our understanding. Even if we contacted the simulators, how could we trust the reply? The simulation hypothesis rests on a computational view of reality, assuming consciousness and experience can be reduced to algorithms. While fruitful in fields like AI, it may not capture the full complexity of reality. Can we reduce love or the beauty of a sunset to computation? The hard problem of consciousness remains a mystery. Would simulating neural activity create true consciousness or just an imitation? Of course, complex systems can exhibit properties beyond their individual components. The simulation hypothesis often intersects with another mind-bending concept, the anthropic principle. In its simplest form, the anthropic principle states that the universe we observe must be compatible with the existence of observers, us. After all, if the universe were radically different, with different laws of physics or different fundamental constants, we wouldn't be here to ponder its nature. Some proponents of the simulation hypothesis argue that the anthropic principle lends credence to the idea that we're living in a simulation. They suggest that the simulators might have fine-tuned the parameters of our simulated universe to create conditions suitable for life and perhaps even consciousness. In essence, we're special because we were designed to be special. However, critics argue that invoking the anthropic principle to support the simulation hypothesis is a circular argument. It's like saying that the reason the lottery winner won is that they bought the winning ticket. It's true, but it doesn't tell us anything profound about the lottery itself. The anthropic principle, while a useful tool for understanding our place in the cosmos, doesn't necessarily imply that we're living in a simulation. It simply reminds us that our observations of the universe are biased by the fact that we're here to observe it. The simulation hypothesis blends science fiction and philosophy, leaving us with more questions than answers. Can we prove or disprove our reality is a simulation? Perhaps not. What if the whole reality, including the basic one, is computational in nature? Some physicists, like Seth Lloyd, have suggested exactly that. The hypothesis is difficult to test empirically, yet the journey itself has value. It compels us to confront our assumptions about reality and perception. As we venture further, the lines between real and virtual blur. Virtual reality becomes immersive, AI grows sophisticated, and our understanding expands. The simulation hypothesis reminds us that reality's boundaries might be malleable. The question of living in a simulation remains, but exploring it pushes us to the edge of human knowledge. Perhaps we would be creating simulated worlds of our own soon. Have you heard about digital twins of the whole cities being created, or even the whole Earth? Perhaps those simulations will contribute to our eternal quest to understand the world.